This is just a quick picture of a, a kit, of a UGL kit, with the AF actuator on it. Oh, this is an NF, sorry. So how do we pick a UGL kit? Uh, this particular example, we need a one and a quarter inch valve, needing it 90, 90 pounds close off spring return. So based on those numbers, we go right to the actuator, and here we have to pick out a UGL kit. How did we do that? It's a, it's a, it's a Siemens 658 two-way, somewhere between a half and one and a quarter. They have two options here, the uh, UGLK1350 or the UGLK1214. The selection would be the 1214 because it will give the required close-off, the close-off that you're required to have on this application. The uh, UGLK1350 uses an LF actuator and will not close off on that 90 pounds. So you would pick the UGLK1214, you go to 104 pound close-off, and you'll see you use the NF series. So depending on how you have your control and your power, then you pick, you pick the particular motor that you would need. So the items would be ordered two items, the UGLK1214 linkage and then the actuator. These are just the basic series that we have with UGLK retrofits, and these are some of the uh, MFT codes. You guys don't need to memorize these. You just have to call when you call industrial that you give them, you know, the control signal that you need. Um, okay, so say we can't identify the valve and the bands are gone and you can't see on it. We will have uh, what we require is a custom retrofit. So we have a form in the book that we, you'd be required to fill out. This is actually changed in the books that you're going to get. It's a little easy to, to, to um, basically uh, go through. But uh, you fill out this form 90% of the time. And here's another example of the diagrams. 90% of the time, we'll be able to uh, match up with a stock unit. But if, if we do need to do some customization, we will do that in our uh, machine shop at Delimo. So uh, this is, you got to get industrial you know, involved and then get either us out or we can get this done on custom. So we do do custom retrofits. So quickly, butterfly valves, there's time limited. Same type of scenario if you want to take a manual valve and, and, make it, and make it automated or we can replace a, um, a competitor's automated valves, and we basically do the same type of thing. We have um, a center line two and a half inch uh, with two AFs, which is the maximum close off with the AFs. Or if it's non spring, it would be the GMs or the dual GMs. And we'll basically be able to retrofit up to 24 inch butterfly valves. And this is our industrial line, as you can see. Um, this just shows a picture of the assemblies for the, for the uh, spring return and non spring return. Uh, we do three ways, and this book not only shows you the assemblies, but shows you pictures, and it actually gives you instructions on assembly. Um, these are our industrial motors, the NEMA 4X, outside with heaters, two auxiliary switches, and uh, these are very common to the larger sizes. Some custom retrofit examples. Um, this, this is an example we used up in uh, Brown University with a rotisserie motor. Or I call it rotisserie motor, that's why we, that's what we thought it was good for. Um, what it is, is through MFT, we were able to program a 104-degree drive. Um, what happens is it was a pneumatic to electronic, and 90-degree swing on the motor was not sufficient enough. So we were able to program this motor to, to give the extra uh, degrees of drive and change this to a summer or winter switch. These are just examples to show you that we, you know, we're, you know, we'll do custom stuff. So if you've got something out there that's kind of weird, we'll get right into it. As you can see, is a glow valve, an old glow valve. We did a retrofit. And if the valve's integrity is good, you know, and, you know, why change it? But uh, most of the time, if the valve's, you know, older, you may want to have think about changing the whole valve. Here's an, here's an example we just set up. We went from, a, it was a pneumatic application. And what we did was, because of room constraints, we weren't able to put that SY actuator right on top of the valve, as you can see here. So, in Manhattan just recently. So these are just examples to show you that Belimo will, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try to think outside the box to uh, retrofit applications. Uh, something just, something coming out new. We are now going to come out uh, probably in August with retrofits that will go on the Siemens uh, 81Us, I believe. Less is the, less, I think that's the uh, actuator. And um, they'll be able to screw around direct uh, retrofit to Siemens short stroke with no tools, and these are just what's, you can see this is the actual linkage, and then our non-spring motor.
um, you can type into the interface, and I will read those questions, and we can have an give uh, the guys an opportunity to answer them. Or you can raise your hand um, by also using the interface, and I can pass the audio control over, and you can ask your question that way. Um, okay, we have Kyle who's asking a question. Let's see if I can. Uh, Kyle, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, we have some audio issue there. Um, all right, I'm going to take a a question that's submitted by text. Is, is there a way to retrofit ball valves? Um, yes, uh, we we just started uh, retrofitting ball valves. We don't have a lot of cross reference on them, but in the new catalog, we do have um, um, the basically a sheet that you need to fill out. So any any ball valve that can have a mounting on the top driving 90 degrees, Polimo will look at, and we've done quite a bit of industrial ball valve changes today. Uh, let me weigh in on that a second. Um, I get a lot of inquiries regarding inexpensive ball valves with handles on them. Mm -hmm. And I think Watts in the old day had a sort of actuator that grabbed the handle, like almost like a fork stuck down through mm -hmm. the handle and was able to turn that. It's a disaster. Mm -hmm. what, what, you, what you didn't emphasize there, Bob, was we can retrofit something that was meant to have an actuator. So it's difficult to retrofit sort of ball valves that were only meant to be hand ball valves, cheap and expensive, mm -hmm. um, so that if it's got a mounting pad, that's a different story. That yeah, can that's be. That's why I mentioned industrial you know, type right. of valves, but that's a good distinguishing thing. Okay. Uh, Michael is raising his hand. Michael, would you like, like to ask your question? Okay, Michael. and then we have an audio issue, but I do have a question on text. Can we get some Belimo catalogs for us? And actually, we're going to send the, the Belimo retrofit catalog out to everybody who registered for the webinar. Um, you should probably have those uh, within a week or so. We're also posting them on, on the Internet. So if you navigate to industrialcontrolsonline.com, you can go to our training link. And under the training link, you're going to find this webinar. On that page, we're going to have the, uh, the PDF version of the catalog. Um, see Make sure you use the Valesco voice. Scroll over to the razor hand. OK. Um, yeah. I have another text question. How can I size an actuator motor to a damper? Okay, in, our, in, our, in the catalog, it actually goes through a 10-step, um, in that retrofit book, 10-step um, uh, process for you to properly size dampers. One of the biggest things today is you have an old motor that, say, it died. I say resize the damper. Um, you know, make sure that it actually works physically, um, and then go from there. Uh, we do have extensive trainings, again, that we go over damper sizing. So it's in that, in that retrofit book. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming through, so um, as we're running out of time here. I just want to mention that we're going to have a few more webinars coming up. We're planning um, something in March. It's going to be about using non-obstructive airflow measuring stations. We don't have a date for this yet, but we're going to have one posted on the website soon, so uh, you can look for that, or, and we're also going to send an email invitation out, um, anyone's address, email address that we have here. Uh, if you missed any part of today's presentation, uh, we're going to put a recorded version of it on the Internet. Um, we're going to follow up with an email that's going to link you to everything. It's going to have our contact information if you have any questions that you'd like to uh, you know, give to our experts. Um, and with that, I don't have anything else. And I'd like to thank you guys for the presentation, and thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you. Thank you.